okay let's start good evening everyone i am shivani tok and uh, so this is the week 2 tutorial for modern digital communication techniques course and every sunday we'll have this tutorial for at this time most probably at this time and uh, last week also we had it was basically an introductory session or some very fundamental basic questions i had covered the major content of this course started with the week 2 which is with uh, the concept of source coding so let's start and uh, since many of you are attending this session this tutorial session for the first time the way i'll go around with this tutorial is first i'll do a recap of the that particular week's content like i'll first do today i'll first do recap of week 2 content and after that i'll take some questions which are related to the content that is being covered in the week 2 content and uh, maybe some additional insights may be present in that and sometimes the questions will be similar to the way they are asked in your assignments so that it helps you in solving your assignments further whenever i am explaining any particular point any content if you have any sort of doubt you can just stop me and ask me at that point i am fine with it even while solving any question if you feel you are not understanding it or you want me to slow down or speed up you can just ask me to do that at any point of time so let's start with a recap of week 2 content so this week 2 began with a block diagram of receiver now basically this receiver block diagram look too heavy like discussing each and every block is not important right now but uh, the faculty mentioned broadly what all components are present however now uh, we'll be looking at uh, individual blocks one by one as the course unfolds so the major topic with which the course has started is known as source coding and by source coding we mean that uh, i have some source which is producing some symbols or rather some uh, information which is discrete in time and discrete in amplitude which are discrete in time and discrete in amplitude now these source sources which we are uh, which we have got may not be in a good form or rather we want to convert them into some binary or some m array uh, bits or some form and the target of the source code is to generate a bit a sequence of bits which correspond to some particular uh, source symbol or rather source input symbol so with the start of this discrete sources uh, uh, this source coding the first topic that was touched was this discrete sources and this discrete source is basically this discrete source outputs a sequence of symbols from a finite size known alphabet that is i have a uh, what do you mean by an alphabet alphabet is a collection of uh, symbols a finite collection of sim symbols uh, which are not in a binary form they may be like if i am speaking it might be my voice levels discretized and uh, time quantized uh, time discretized and uh, quantized uh, values which i need to then convert into binary string or some kind of code so that can be done in two ways first way is to go for fixed length codes and another is the is the way in uh, for uh, variable length codes so the first topic that was touched was fixed length codes it is very simple that is uh, it is very very simple to do like if i uh, each and every uh, symbol in that uh, alphabet is assigned with a fixed length uh, value or fixed length binary string and that string for some alphabet in this uh, for, for some symbol x in this alphabet the code assigned to it is given by this c of x and this c stands for that code now if l is the length of the code word that is if i am representing it with uh, let's say two bits like let's say two bits so each of this bit can take two values which means i'll have 2 to the power l possibilities or 2 to the power l distinct possibilities that can uh, that i can assign to each of them and that means another way to look at is if i have m symbols in that alphabet then i need to take l that is the number of bits as the seal of log 2 
uh, log m to the base 2. Another thing that was done was uh, looking at block n symbols, that is collection of these n symbols and assigning a fixed uh, number of bits to each. So what it said that asymptotically it was performing in a better way. That is asymptotically if this n, that is the number of blocks tend to infinity, then at that time this L bar is log uh, m to the base 2, which is uh, the best possible thing that we can have, which will be discussed in coming weeks. Any doubt you have in this uh, fixed length codes? Okay. Then the next thing that was started was variable length code. The motivation behind it was uh, each and every symbol may not occur that frequently or some symbol might occur too frequently. Like if I am speaking, the words containing the alphabet Z, uh, the letter Z are now very less occurring. Whereas A, E, M, that kind of letters occur more frequently. So it is better to assign more bits to the uh, less occurring symbols than to the uh, least occurring symbols. Like like less number of bits should be assigned to a uh, to an alphabet which is uh, to a code which is appearing frequently now what will this give me this will give me uh, the average length the uh, average length of the code will reduce which will be minimum and that is what we need because we want to use the communication sources uh, resources like bandwidth very efficiently so in order to do that we go for variable length coding and that takes some probabilistic information into consideration now this uh, uh, now after that there is a concept of uniform decodability that is a code should be uniformly decodable such that if uh, two or more codes come one after the other and i concatenate it like for example i have three codes Let's say C1, C2 and C3 which is 0, 1, 1, 0. These are distinctly allocated. Now suppose what transmitter does it, it just spits out all of these codes one after the other. Now suppose this transmitter sends C3, C2, C1 that is it will send 1, 0, 1, 0. This is first transmission and second transmission is let's say C2, C3, C, C two, C one, and C three. So this becomes one zero one zero. Now this receiver in both these transmissions will up, uh, encounter same strings, and uh, this they won't be able to distinguish. So this is not uniformly decodable. The receiver won't be able to distinguish whether C3, C2, C1 is being transmitted or C2, C1, C3 is being transmitted. The next thing is uh, that was introduced for prefix free codes and uh, in this what happens is if I have a code or what first thing that was taken was what is prefix. So it says that if I have a string y1, y2, till ym then anything before then that this part is known as prefix of that particular string that is y1 y2 y3 y4 then y1 y2 y3 are prefix of y4 similarly y1 y2 is also prefix of this and so on even this entire string is prefix of itself Okay, so now what are prefix pre codes? So, uh, no code, no code word should be prefix of any other code work that is present in it. And uh, this prefix free code can be constructed using a binary tree. And all its, its codes are present at the nodes of its tree, of its uh, tree, uh, sorry, leaves of its trees, uh, tree. This I'll explain with the help of examples when we'll solve the examples. And next thing is full prefix free codes. No code word can be add. Uh, what it says is if I have a tree corresponding to a prefix free code, then it says that no code word can be added or no code word can be removed such that the prefix free property is not broken. Okay, so what happens is let's say we have one condition here.
which is something like this. So this is C1, 0, 1, 0, 1, this is C2 and C3. Now if I want to uh, remove this, this line, suppose this uh, code, then I'll have to assign this C2 here. That is not possible. I can't do that because uh, in, in that situation, this C2, if I make this as a code word, it will become a prefix of this. Similarly, I cannot add anything here and make uh, another code word C4 because now this C2 will become prefix of this C4. Means I can't remove and I can't add, which means that the original tree was full. But if I have a situation which is something like this, zero one one and C two in something like this I have C3 now what I can do is I can remove this and make this as C3 what I can do is I can remove this and make this as C3 in that situation still prefix free property holds or what I can do is I can add another node here leaf node here and make this as C4 still prefix free condition will hold which means the original tree without this this and uh, removal of this it was still a full uh, it was not at all a full prefix free code okay after that an important concept of craft inequality was introduced so what does this craft inequality tell it tells a condition that if i am given a set of alphabet and I have been told that this alphabet can be represented using a code with a particular length, with a particular set of lengths. Does that length or the codes using that lengths be a prefix free code or not? That is, if I have been given a set of lengths, can I construct a prefix free code using that lengths? An important thing to note here is, it just tells whether a prefix free code can be found or not. It does not give any standard procedure whether the all the particular all the codes with that uh, lens are prefix free or not we'll see an example that even the craft inequality is satisfied it is not uh, prefix free we'll see in the coming examples another thing is if this inequality is satisfied with equality then in that case the prefix free code is full okay after that discrete memory source was introduced in that it's it was mentioned that uh, it is a uh, uh, it this discrete memory less source uh, gives an unending uh, sequence of our uh, sources so each of it coming from a finite alphabet given by this script text now each of this alphabet inside occurs with a particular probability which means uh, this x1 uh, this x axis will correspond to some uh, sort of probability mass function that is this x equal to a1 will occur at some particular probability and so on furthermore it is memoryless source which means that the current transmission will not depend on the future or the past transmission it is completely memoryless therefore it means that all these x1 x2 xc that is what i am transmitting at this instant next instant to the next instant all of these are statistically independent next thing is length of x that is uh, currently what i am transmitting the length of that will be a random variable because i don't know what i am transmitting and let's say that random variable is l and the average length is given as length of that particular code word into pmf of that code word for uh, and sum of it over all so this is known as the average length or the expected length of the code word. This was all the concepts, uh, these were all the concepts that were covered in the week one and uh, in next week uh, we'll be going ahead with uh, getting the least or the minimum possible average length and the concepts uh, further to it and we'll also look at how to construct the code word codes which will give this minimum length condition. Any questions at this point regarding any concept?
any questions okay if not then we'll start with uh, the questions so let's start with the first question so the question says that what is the number of bits required to represent an al represent an alphabet with cardinality m using fixed length codes where this m is uh, where the various possibilities of m are given so in the previous slides when I was discussing this concept what did we say is if we have let's say I have this alphabet X and its cardinality is given M then the number of bits required to represent this are basically log M to the base 2 but with a seal also this L satisfies the inequality that it is greater than log M to the base 2 and it is less than or equal, greater than or equal to log M to the base 2 and less than or equal to log M to the base 2 plus 1 and this, uh, this inequality is satisfied with strict equality when this is equal when L is of this form or rather M is of this form then it's a, in that situation this will follow a strict equality so let us use this formula that is given here in order to find the lengths of uh, these codes code uh, length of the codes code words assigned through a fixed length code so the first thing that we have been given here is m is equal to 4 so therefore in this situation l is equal to log 4 to the base 2 but with a seal now if you calculate what we can do is we can write this as log 2 to the power 2 base 2 which is 2 log 2 to the base 2 and uh, this is equal to 2 because this this thing here is equal to 1 and therefore this reduces to 2 so we need 2 bits to represent this code word okay now next thing that we have here is m is equal to 5 so therefore this length l is seal of log 5 to the base 2 now if you use your calculators and try to find it this log 5 to the base 2 this comes out to be 2.3219 and ceiling means we need to look at the least integer which is greater than this number so the uh, smallest integer which is greater than this number is 3 which means I need 3 bits to represent this now again if you look at this 3 this thing here this thing here look at this thing this is log we have log 5 to the base 2 as 2.3219 and if we observe this 2.3219 is greater than or equal to this uh, is less than or equal to this 3 which is less than or equal to 2.3219 plus 1 which is equal to 3.3219 okay which means this satisfies the inequality which is listed here okay let us look at the third example that is I have m is equal to 11 so here I have I am looking at the third one that is m is equal to 11 therefore l is equal to seal 
log 11 to the base 2 again using calculators you can find that this is log 11 is basically 3.46 and seal of this is 4 bits now when you are using your calculators please be careful that you need to use log with base 2 and not log uh, with base 10 or natural log if it is mentioned that you have to use bits if it is asked to give the number of bits then it will always be to the base 2 but if it is asked it is nat then you will have to go for uh, natural log if it is asked for hartley then it you have to take uh, log to the base 10 that is your decade thing so please be careful look at the question what is being asked if it is asked that you need to go for uh, binary thing or bits then you should go for log uh, to the base 2 and in most of the cases it will be binary it will be bits will be already only dealing with bits but still just to confuse you in question paper you may get uh, that you need to find the number of nats you required so just be little bit careful when you are solving your questions in any of your college exam or this NPTEL exam so let's go to the fourth one so what we have here is m is equal to 15 so therefore again this l is seal log 15 to the base 2 this is log 15 to the base 2 comes out to be 3.9 which is equal to again 4 bits and the last one that we have is m is equal to 16 that is we have length as seal log 16 to the base 2 this I can write as log 2 to the power 4 which is 4 log 2 to the base 2 which is 2 bits. I hope this is clear. Do you have any doubts in this? Please feel free to unmute yourself at any point of time if you don't understand anything. Ma'am? Yes? Uh, here a two, 4 log base to the 2 is equal to 2 bits or 4 bits? Oh sorry 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 4 bits my mistake yeah this this goes to 1 it is 4 bits yeah sorry okay. thank you okay so let's go to second question so what we have been given here is this is the alphabet x which contains four symbols that is one two three four and uh, the code corresponding to 1 is 0 so what we have been given is this code corresponding to 1 is 0 which means that the length corresponding to 1 is 1 this is one length code it is just represented by 0 it is uh, it has a length 1 similarly for the code for 2 is given as 1 0 So length of uh, 2, sorry this is code for 2, it is 1 0 which implies length of this code word is 2. Again for C3 it is 1 1 0. Yeah. 
which means that a length of this is 3 and code for 4 is 111 which means length of 4 the code word of for 4 is again 3 another information that we have been so what exactly do we need to do we need to find the average length assuming all respective probabilities as 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.2 and 0 0.05 so what does it mean is 1 occurs with a probability 0 0.5 2 occurs with probability 0.25, 3 occurs with probability 0.2 and 4 occurs with probability 0 0.05. So what we have been given here is probability of occurrence of 1 is 0.5, probability of occurrence of 2 is 0 0.25, Probability of occurrence of 3 is 0 0.2 and probability of occurrence of 4 is 0 0.05. And what do we need to do? We need to find the average length of this code word. So if we go back and look at our discussion, so the average length is given as summation over the number of codes index that we have length of each code multiplied by probability of that code word so we'll use the same thing so we need to do average length that is expectation of length and i'll rewrite the formula so this will be j equal to 1 to m what is m here m is 4 we have four elements in this code word so m is 4 I'll write it explicitly m is equal to 4 length of aj and here aj equal to j that is a1 equal to 1 a2 equal to 2 and so on so this length of j into probability of it so what we have here is if I write it properly, it will be length of 1 into probability of 1 plus length of 2 into probability of 2 plus length of 3 into probability of 3 plus length of 4 into probability of 4. So this is equal to 0 0.5 or let me write it properly. Length of 1 is 1 into probability of 1 is 0 0.5 plus length of uh, 2 is 2 into probability of 2 is 0 0.25 plus length of 3 is 3 into probability of 3 is 0 0.2 plus length of 4 is again 3 into its probability that is 0 0.05 okay so this is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.15 this comes out to be this is 1 plus 0 0.6 1.6 plus 0 0.15 that is 1.75 so this is 1.75 bits any questions not then let us look at the next question so now let us look at some questions which will involve the concept of prefix free codes we'll also try to use the graft inequality and many more many more things so what we have been given here is the question says which of the following 
are prefix free codes and then if they are prefix free codes are they full prefix free codes these are the two questions that we need to answer okay and we there are uh, four sub parts for this question so let's look at them one by one so the first part or the first code to a uh, code that we have been given is this zero one zero and one one now if we observe carefully these are three code words what does prefix free code mean so if i have some code word let's say zero one zero one one so this part like okay to be specific if i have this code word let's say some code for symbol aj if i have it like this then in order to have the entire code book as prefix free this zero zero one zero one zero zero one zero one these four possibilities what zero zero one zero one zero and zero one zero one these four possibilities should not be code words that is one code word should not be found as a prefix of another code word so let us try to figure out if that is the case in this so the um, so these two are basically two uh, this uh, two digit or, or two bit uh, code words and this is one bit code word so let us we just need to look whether this code word appears as a prefix of next two so this is zero and uh, the first bit of uh, both of these is one which means this is not a prefix of this similarly this is not a prefix of this the third code word also which means that the first one this first one is prefix free okay now since it is prefix free we need to check that they are full or not and the best way to check it is to check whether the craft inequality is satisfied with equality okay so let us see first what is your craft inequality so the craft inequality says that if i have m code words so let's say this j runs from 1 to m then 2 to the power minus of length of aj this summation should be less than or equal to 1 and if code is full then summation j equal to 1 to m 2 to the power minus length of a j should satisfy with equality okay so this is what we have using craft inequality we write it here and both of these things come from craft inequality okay so if you observe here length of a1 is 1 length of a2 is 2 and length of a3 is 2 so using craft inequality what do we have is 2 to the power minus length of 1 which is 1 or let me write it properly plus 2 to the power minus length of a2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a3 this is equal to 2 to the power minus length of a1 is 1 plus 2 to the power minus length of a2 is minus 2 plus 2 to the power length of a3 which is again So it is minus 2. So this is 1 by 2 that is 0 0.5. This is 0 0.25 plus okay, let me write it 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. So this adds up to 1 which means the craft inequality is satisfied with 
equality strict equality which means this is prefix free code and it is full it is both prefix free and it is full any questions Okay, if not, then let us look at the next question or uh, next part of this question. So, what do we have is the next part says we are given with this code book here, and what we have here is 00, zero 01, 10, 11, one one and 110. So, this is A1, A2. A3, A4, and A5. Four uh, code books uh, or four code um, symbols we have, and corresponding to which we have a code. Okay, now we need to check if it is prefix free or not. Now these are two bits, and this is the last one, which is three bits, which means we need to check whether A1, A2, A3, or A4, any one of it is a prefix of A5. So clearly, a1 is not a prefix, it is 0, 0. It is not a prefix. So the possible 2 bit prefix for this code A5 is 1, 1, and this 1, 1 is basically A4, which means A4 is prefix of A5, which clearly mention, means that. This second one is not a prefix free code. I hope this is clear. Now, just to check whether uh, this condition, uh, the craft inequality condition, what it gives us, just to check this length of. Uh, a1 is 2, length of A2 is 2, length of A3 is 2, length of A4 is 2, and length of A5 is 3. So now if just to understand what this craft inequality will give me here uh, is this is 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 2. So what we are looking here is craft inequality. Plus 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 3. So what does this mean? This is 2 to the power minus 2. That is, I can write this, this part as 4 into 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 which is 1 plus 1 by 8 which is obviously greater than 1 so craft inequality is also not satisfied which means with this given lens with this given lens i cannot find or i cannot design a prefix free code so what this craft inequality in this case tells us is with the lens to 2, 2, 2, and 3, no prefix free code can be found. Any doubts at this point? not then let us go ahead with next next part of this question
so again what we have is c1 is 0 0 c2 is 0 1 c3 is 1 0 and c4 is 1 1 0 now again if we observe this first three are two bits and the last one is three bit and uh, the possible two bit prefix for this three bit code word is one one and you we can observe that one one is not equal to c1 or c2 or c3 which means all of these c1 c2 and c3 are not at all a prefix for this code word c4 which means this is a prefix free code so this means that it is prefix free code now since it is prefix free we need to check whether it is full uh, prefix uh, free code or not so what we have here is length of a1 as to length of a2 as to length of a3 as to and length of a4 as 3. So what we have here in order to check if it is full or not we will use craft inequality. So 2 to the power minus length of a1 plus 2 to the power minus length of a2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a3 plus 2 to the power minus length of a4 and this is equal to 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 3 so this comes out to be 1 by 4 or rather 2 to the power minus 2 is 1 by 4 and this appears 3 times so this is 3 by 4 plus 1 by 8 which I can write as 7 by 8 which is clearly less than 1 so this is strict inequality which means this 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 thing is not equal to 1 or rather it is strictly less than 1 and hence this code even though it is prefix free it is not full it is prefix free but it is not full any questions okay if not uh, then let's go ahead with the fourth part of this question so what it says is which of the again the same question we have and now the code word that we have been given is c1 is 0 c2 is 0 1 c3 is 1 0 now this is a one bit code here this is one bit code and this should not be this should not be prefix of others however this this zero appears here which means c1 is prefix of c2 now since it is prefix of c2 it clearly implies that this fourth one that is 0 0 1 and 1 0 this is not a prefix free code
now you observe uh, the two examples the first one this one and this one let's go back to this first one okay so this was the first part that we had looked at that is this one and we had seen that this is a prefix free code and a full code now the thing that you need to look at is both of these codes have code words with same length that is l1 that is here and here in both of the situations l, l length of a1 is 2 length of a2 is 2 and length of a3 is uh, 3 and we had seen that for these lengths for these lengths craft inequality is satisfied and to be more specific it is satisfied with strict equality or rather it is satisfied with equality for this given length so if uh, but however this first one but one this was full prefix free and two or rather sorry not two four this four not prefix free which means that if you have been given a code a code book or rather a code and you have uh, you you are you have been asked whether the code this given code is prefix free or not even though it satisfies the craft inequality it may not be a prefix free code basically craft inequality says that given a length or given a set of lengths whether you can form a prefix free code or not it just mentions that it doesn't say that for this particular set of lengths you construct any possible code it will be prefix free it doesn't say that it just mentions that there exists some code word or some code with this set of uh, lengths that will be prefix free it does not guarantee that all the code which are made or which are constructed using this set of lens are prefix free so you have to be very careful while using craft inequality if you have been asked if it is prefix free if it is a prefix free code or not you have to look at it minutely should not rely just on craft inequality craft inequality just says about lens and nothing else it does not guarantee that it will be a prefix free code at all that you can see from this first and fourth example so i'll make a note here so that if you access this after some days or look at it on youtube you will be able to figure it out what i mentioned so what does it mean that uh, given a code check if a code word is yes Brushali, uh, you have raised your hand uh, yes ma'am i have one doubt yes. Uh, Ma'am, here uh, length of A1 is equal to 2 uh, or sorry, 1. Length of A1 is 1. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, but. And length of A3 is equal to 3. My uh -huh. mistake. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry okay. to confuse you. Length of A1 is 1, uh, length of yes. A2 is 2, length of A3 is 2. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So the whole point here is 
if I have been given a code, check if it, if a code word is prefix of others or not. Craft inequality. does not guarantee that all possible code words or all code with given lengths are prefix free. Just be careful while solving your questions. Any other question uh, or doubt related to this question three? If not, then let us look at another simple question. So this entire week was basically related to craft inequality, prefix free codes and that. So most of the questions that we'll be solving will involve the craft inequality so that you get a hold on it, how to do it. So what we have been given here uh, or asked here is, can you construct a prefix free code using the following length? So if I have been given a set of lengths and we need to check whether we need to find a prefix free, uh, whether a prefix free code exists or not, the only way to do is to use a uh, craft inequality. We don't care how to construct the code, how to, uh, how that code will look, how to arrange the bits, how to associate that code word to one particular symbol. No, nothing we have to look at. We just have to make a comment whether particular length set can be or a particular code can be constructed using the given set of lengths. So let us look at the first one. So in the first one we have been given length of A1 as 2, length of A2 as 2, length of A3 as 2, length of A4 again as 2, length of a5 as 3 and length of a6 as 3 okay so what does graph inequality say is we need to check if j equal to 1 to 6 2 to the power minus length of aj is less than or equal to 1 or not. So this is equal to 2 to the power length of 1 that is minus 2 plus 2 to the power length of 2 that is minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus L3 that is again 2 plus 2 to the power minus L4 which is 2 plus 2 to the power minus L length of 5 plus 2 to the power minus length of 6 that is so this comes out to be this this is 1 by 4 repeated 4 times plus 1 by 8 repeated 2 times so this is 1 plus 0.25 that is 1.25 which is greater than 1 which implies craft inequality is not satisfied which means no prefix free code exists using given set of lengths Okay. 
I hope this part is clear. Let us look at the second part of this question. So here again we have been given a set of lens and here the cardinality of code word is 4. So what do we have here is length of A1, length of A1 is 1, length of A2 is 2, length of A3 is 2 and length of A4 is 4. Okay, so now again we will use this graph inequality. So what do we have is summation j equal to 1 to 4, 2 to the power minus length of a j. So this is 2 to the power minus length of a1 that is minus 1 plus 2 to the power minus length of uh, a2 that is minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a3 which is again 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a4 which is 4. So this comes out to be 1 by 2 plus 2 into 1 by 4 which is again 1 by 2 plus 1 by 16 which is 1 plus 1 by 16. Now clearly this is greater than 1. Again we cannot again we cannot generate or construct a prefix free code using this given set of lens so no prefix free code as graft inequality is not satisfied Any questions? Okay, so now let us look at the fifth question. So what is being asked is we need to try to construct a tree if prefix free code exists with the given set of lengths. So now if we look at uh, our discussion with prefix free code. So we had mentioned here that given a prefix free code a binary tree can be constructed and all the code words are located at the leaf nodes. So now with the given set of uh, lens we need to figure out whether a uh, tree a binary tree with this kind of structure can be found or not so how what we'll have to do is basically if we look back at this question what have what have been given to us we have been given the lens so this lens this is given information Okay, and we need to check if, uh, if we can construct a tree uh, such that a prefix free code is there or not. So the best way to first uh, do is, so first we will check if prefix free code can be constructed. using and this we'll do with the help of craft inequality and next thing we'll do if code exists We will construct a tree. Now this construction of tree is purely arbitrarily done right now. 
where the probabilistic nature and other things will be taken into consideration as we proceed in the next week's content that will be much more interesting however let us just see if some tree exists or not okay so for the first question that is here we have four uh, we have given five uh, length sequence so we have length of a1 as 2 length of a2 as 2 length of a3 as 2 length of a4 as 3 and length of a5 as 4 okay let me do this on a new page So this is what we have been given okay so what we'll do is we'll use craft inequality so we'll do summation j equal to 1 to 5 2 to the power minus length of a j So this is 2 to the power minus length of a1 that is minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a2 that is 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a3 that is 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a4 that is my 3 plus 2 to the power minus length of a5 that is 4 so what do we have here is this is 1 by 4 repeated thrice so this is 3 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16 so I can write this as 12 plus 2 plus 1 upon 16 which is 15 by 16 which is less than 1 which means craft inequality is satisfied so this means that craft inequality is satisfied which means there exists a prefix free code okay now let's try to construct a tree using this given information so what we'll have uh, we'll be having is We'll be having uh, four codes like this then here length of a1 will be 2 we write it here length of a1 will be 2 length of a2 will be 2 length of a3 will be 2 length of a4 will be 2 and length of a5 will be 2 okay so now let's try to construct a tree using this given information so let's say this is the root node and what we will do is uh, let us branch it out in two parts that is 1 0 let's say the upper branch has weight 1 that it corresponds to bit 1 now if you observe here no cold word has length 1 so now which means that we can branch out both of these nodes here further so both of these nodes we can branch out like this 1 0 1 0 now you observe here length uh, a uh, the c1 c2 and c3 are of length a4 is of length 3 and this is of length 4 yeah sorry hmm. so a1 a2 and a3 are of length 2 2 2 which means what i can do is i can assign this one this one and this one as c1 this c1 this is c2 
and this is C3. So how to look at this C1, how to read this C1. So we'll start with this root node and this is 1 and this is 1. So whatever branches it covers till, till the leaf that will correspond to, uh, to the node or rather to the code word that is there. Okay. So the code word for this thing is 1 1. So C1 is 1 1. Similarly, for C2, it is 1, 0. So this is 1, 0. For C3, it goes like this. It is 0 and then 1. Now the C4 is of length 3, which means I can extend this branch here into two more. That is something like this. So now uh, this is this part, uh, these two, both the two nodes, if I consider as a code word, both of them will have a uh, length as uh, three. So let's say we just need, and after looking at the given set of lengths, we just need only one code, uh, which is of length three. So let's say this one is C4. So now the code word corresponding to C4 is zero, zero and one. Okay, so this is 0, 0, 1. Another thing is, we need the last one as length 4. So let me extend this further, something like this. And let's say this part here, this code word here is C5. And this is 1, this is 1, 0. And this is not a code word, this fifth one here. Let me make it of different color. So this fifth one here is not a code word. However, this one here is a code word. So the C5, the C5 looks something like this, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so it is. 0 0 0 1 and you can observe that it beautifully create uh, this tree when I consider all the code words located at leaf nodes it beautifully creates a code word which is not a prefix free code okay I hope this is clear now another thing that you can look uh, look here is this ratio this is 15 by 16 it is less than 1 which indicates that it is not a full tree so how can you uh, see it uh, by looking at this tree? That is, if suppose I add a code word here, I can add a code word here. If I add a code word here, I am still be able to uh, keep the prefix free condition as it is. Similarly, if I remove this, if I remove this and put the C5 here, still I am able to preserve the prefix free property. So by observing this tree also we are able to say whether it is a full prefix free tree or not. And from craft inequality also it is very much clear that it is a prefix free but not a full prefix free code. Any question? Okay, if not, then I'll move to the next part of the same question. So here, what we have been given is another set of lengths. So we have length of A1 as 1, length of A2 as 2. We are looking at this example. Length of A3 is 2, length of A4 is 3 and length of a5 is 4 okay 
so now let us look at craft inequality again so we have j equal to 1 to 5 2 to the power minus length a j this is equal to 2 to the power minus length of a1 that is minus 1 plus 2 to the power minus length of a2 which is 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a3 which is 2 plus 2 to the power minus length of a4 which is 3 plus 2 to the power minus length of a5 which is 4 so this is 1 by 2 and these two together lead to 1 by 2 this is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 this is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 that is 1 by 2 then this is 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16 which is equal to 1 by 2 plus 3 by 6 I'm sorry this is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 that is 1 plus 3 by 16 which is greater than 1 which means no prefix free code exists. Which means we cannot construct a binary tree with code words at leaf nodes. But let's check if that is the case or not. So what we'll do? Let us try to construct binary tree for part 2. We have found out that there is no prefix tree code and we know that there won't exist any such tree but let us for our understanding let us try to construct one such tree. Okay so what we'll do let us again start with a root node this one and branch it out in two branches like this now here we have been given the case that this first code word this this one c1 this is c1 this is c2 c3 c4 and c5 this c1 is of length 1 so let's say this is 1 0 and let's say this one here is c1 which is 1 okay now next two code words is both are of length 2 which means I need to branch it out once like this 1 0 and this both are of length 2 that is here and here so this is C2 which is of length 0 uh, which is of length 2 and it is 0 1 and this is C3 which is 0 0 this is 0 and 0 now forcefully I need to construct another code which is of length 3 which means I'll have to branch this one out more that is I'll have to do something like this let me take it here I'll have to branch it out like this okay now one code is of length 3 so let's say this one is c4 which is like this 0 0 1 so this is 1 0 so this is 0 0 1 like this And the last one that we are having is of length 4, which means I'll have to branch this out more. And let's say it's of different color, like this. Okay, so this is my C5, which is if I look here, it is 0, 0, 0, 1. 
so this is 0 0 0 1 so c1 is of length 1 c2 is of length 2 c3 is of length 2 c4 is of length 3 and c5 is length 4 now if you observe carefully this c3 is prefix of c4 so we can observe from here or let us say from here c3 is prefix of c4 and by no other way we can add another uh, length code without breaking this prefix free property for this given set of lengths either i'll have to branch out this node or i'll have to branch out this node there is no other way to create more uh, trees or more code words with this given length which means that if i have been given this set of lengths i am sure to break this prefix free property so i cannot construct a prefix free code with this given set of lengths also i cannot construct a binary tree like this such that all my code words are present at the leaf nodes any other any questions at this point Okay, if not then let us look at this question next. We have been what we asked is which of the following trees are prefix free code. So it is similar to the question that was uh, that we were trying to solve here. But now we have been given two graphs and we need to figure out if they are codes or not. Now these codes are indicated by alphabet uh, by symbol ui so each of these trees have three codes uh, three code words and correspond to one code so these are three code words that is u1 u2 u3 similarly here also it is u1 u2 u3 so if you observe let us go part by part uh, so the first one here is u1 and uh, it is simply one okay so this u1 is one now if we go ahead and look here this u2 is 0 1 so this u2 is 0 1 and this u3 is 0 0 this u3 is 0 0 now if you observe here 1 is not at all a prefix of u2 and u3 which means this is a prefix free code this is a prefix free code Another way of looking at uh, this problem is observe where the codes are located. So this code, uh, where the code words are located, these code words are located at the leaf nodes here. So you can observe that this U1, U2 and U3, these are located at leaf nodes. and not at some and not here so here no code word is here since uh, they are located at leaf nodes this is a prefix free tree or prefix free code now if we look at this the second part so if we look carefully one code word is located here one code word is located here and another code word is located here now if you observe carefully this is not a leaf node this one where this u2 is located this is not a leaf node which clearly indicates that this won't be a pref this won't lead to a prefix free code how let us look so this u1 if i look carefully this is 1 1 this u2 this u2 is simply 0 
and his u3 is 0 0 now this this is an intermediate node this is not a leaf node and this leaf node takes us to another uh, this uh, this node takes us to another leaf node which is here so now this node if this node leads to one leaf node the code which is located at this leaf node will have a prefix of whatever code word is assigned at this particular node that is this u2 which is 0 is prefix of this u3 that is located here so it clearly shows one reason is this is not a leaf node and this since it is not a leaf node it leads to creation of a prefix like this and therefore this is not a prefix free code any questions okay if not then let us look at the next question so this question says that we need to find we need to find the average length of the code mentioned below so this is the code that is given to us and we need to see how much gain do we have over the equal length codes how much gain in terms of how many less bits do we require to represent this code uh, or rather these symbols if we go for a variable length code over a fixed length code so now we are given uh, we have four possibilities that this aj can be abcd this aj can be abcd the code associate code word associated to a is zero Code, was, code word associated to B is 100, code word associated with C is 101 and code word associated with D is 11. And this A, this A occurs with probability 1 by 2, B occurs with probability 1 by 8, C occurs with probability 1 by 8 and D occurs with probability 1 by 4. okay now what we need to find first is average length that is we need to find l bar and this l bar is given as summation j equal to we have four code word uh, four symbols that is a b c j equal to one to four length of a j into probability of aj now let me add another column here which gives me length of aj here length of aj when aj is equal to a is 1 length of uh, for code word of b is 3 length of code word for c is 3 and length of code word for d is 2 okay so what do we have here is length of a j that is for j equal to 1 is 1 into its probability so length is 1 and the probability is 1 by 2 so we have 1 by 2 into 1 plus this is length is 3 and probability is 1 by 8 so it is 1 by 8 into 3 plus again length is 3 and probability is 1 by 8 so it is 1 by 8 into 3 plus it is length is 2 and probability is 1 by 4 so it is 1 by 4 into 2 okay okay so now what we have here is this is 1 by 2 
plus 3 into 1 by 8 plus 3 into 1 by 8 that is 3 by 4 plus 2 by 4 which is 2 plus 3 plus 2 by 4 that is 7 by 4 which is 1.75 bits so this is what we have when we are going for a <coughs> variable length code this is average length for this variable length code now the next thing is how much gain do we have over equal length code so for equal or rather fixed length code L is given as log m to the base 2 with a seal which means here m is 4 we have 4 code uh, 4 symbols we have 4 symbols here a b c d which means we have m is equal to 4 so we have log 4 to the base 2 which is 2 bits okay and therefore extra bits for fixed length is 2 minus 1.75 that is 0 0.25 so what does it mean is we need 0 0.25 on an average this is on an average bits more for fixed length over variable length code any questions If not then let us look at the eighth question what has been given is or rather what has been asked is out of which of the following allocation of uniquely decodable codes is a better choice compared to others okay so basically we have been given four choices of allocation of the code that is code 1 code 2 code 3 and code 4 for a symbol so this is this is my x and this is x of aj this has been given and this aj takes value a b c d with probabilities 1 by 2 1 by 8 1 by 8 and 1 by 4 as in the previous case the first assignment or the first code is 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 which is same as what we have done in this question okay now and there are uh, this same same code book same code is uh, just rearranged and uh, or rather reallocated in different ways here and the last one is a fixed length thing fixed length code okay so now what is asked is which of the following assignment of uniformly decodable codes is a better choice what do we mean by a better choice is the average length should be as small as possible because we want to use the resources efficiently we need to use bandwidth we need to use power uh, very efficiently so if i increase the number of bits that i am transmitting it will increase the resources that i am using i'll use more resources if i am transmitting more bits and these resources are very uh, has to be used efficiently the bandwidth is very costly and the power that we need uh, like the devices uh, there are basically some restrictions on power uh, how much we can use so both has both the things have to be used very efficiently so which is better choice will compare it based on length so this better choice 
so this better choice is based on average length okay and this average length as we have done in previous one is given by the formula j equal to 1 to m here m is 4 length of aj into probability of aj okay so let's say length for code 1 is l1 bar average length length of code 2 average length is l2 bar length of code 3 is l3 bar and length of code 4 is l4 bar now this length l4 or rather this code 4 is any way of fixed uh, length code so the average here will be 2 and this l1 is exactly the same thing that we have done here in the previous question and we had found out it to be as 1.75 bits so this l1 is 1.75 this is in bits this is also in bits okay now let us try to find what is l3 uh, l2 and l3 so let's do l2 bar so this is basically if you observe here this is of length 2 this is of length 1 this is of length 2 and this is of sorry this is of length 3 this is of length 1 this is of length 2 and this is of length 3 so this is basically 3 into 1 by 2 plus 1 into 1 by 8 plus 2 into 1 by 8 plus 3 into 1 by 4 now if you simplify this this comes out to be 2.625 similarly if we go for l3 bar here if you observe this a has length 3 this has length 3 this has length 2 and this has length 1 so this l3 bar this is 3 into 1 by 2 plus 3 into 1 by 8 plus 2 into 1 by 8 plus 1 into 1 by 4 and this comes out and uh, this comes out to be just a minute I have made some mistake in calculation so the first one is uh, 3 into 1 by 2 plus 1 into 1 by 8 plus 2 into 1 by 8 plus 3 into 1 by 4 first one is fine and second one is 3 into 1 by 2 plus 3 into 1 by 8 plus 2 into 1 by 8 plus 1 into 1 by 4 okay so this comes out to be 2.375 okay. so now if you observe here we have l1 bar as less than l2 l4 bar which is less than l2 bar which is less than l3 bar so basically this l1 bar has minimum length or to be specific minimum average length 
which means this is the better choice. But why? Why is this particular choice better? Now just look at this table here. Another thing, notice this L3 is the worst possible allocation. Okay. L3 is the worst possible allocation here. Let us look at why is this happening. Yes. Ma'am. Ma yeah. Here L3 is worst or L2 is worst? Because L2 sorry, is 2.6. L2. L2 is worst. Okay. L2 is worst. L3 and L2. Yeah, so here L2 is worse, worst case. This one is worst, and uh, the scored one is best that we have seen. Let us see why is this happening. Okay, now if you observe carefully, this A, this A is most frequently occurring thing. That is, it is occurring almost half the number of times. And this B and C, they are occurring very less compared to A. Now, if you observe carefully for the code 1, the smallest length of possible code word is assigned to the one which is most frequently occurring. And the largest lengths possible are allocated to the, uh, co uh, the symbols which are less frequently or least frequently occurring which means this will uh, on an average reduce the length at the it will reduce the average length of the code uh, that we are having however if we look at l2 that is code 2 this 1 by 2 probability which is for a and this a is associated with a code word of length This is a very bad situation. Similarly, the second uh, frequ most frequently occurring code here is D. And I'm, again, I am giving it a uh, length 3 code word, which means uh, the second highest frequently occurring code word uh, symbol is also associated with the largest possible length code, largest length code word here, 3. But the least occurring or least frequently occurring code words that uh, symbols that is B and C are associated with the code words of length 1 and length 2 which means half of the time I'm transmitting three bits however in the uh, which is on an average increasing my length of the code words or the code that I'm transmitting however with respect to this code 1 half of the time I'm just transmitting one bit and maybe one eighth or one fourth time I am transmitting three bits because it, these are two. So one fourth times I am transmitting maybe uh, two bit, uh, three bits. Like one eight times I am transmitting for this, one eight times I am transmitting for this. But most of the time I am transmitting uh, only one bit. However, here most of the time I will be transmitting three bits considering these two. More than half, uh, more than 50% of time. And therefore, this code word is worse. However, if we compare this code 2 and code 3, the main change happens uh, that happens is here. This is even the worst, worst bit is worst thing is given as 3 length. However, this second worst case is given only one bit. So this is somewhat saving it, but still it is very bad because this L2 and L3 are giving me high average lengths compared to my fixed length thing. So instead of transmitting this code 2 and code 3, that is variable length and the motivation behind going for variable length is to reduce the average length of my code. This code 2 and code 3 are giving me average length which is worse than the fixed length coding. So if I'm going with this allocation, I'm not benefiting with the variable length codes. That's why we need a proper allocation or proper association of each symbol to a corresponding code word, which should depend on the probability of that symbol's occurrence. Now, how this has to be done, how we can do it, that everything will be discussed in the coming weeks. There are techniques to do that. 
however intuitively what we need to do is we need to assign the smallest length code word to the frequently occurring symbol and the largest code word to the less uh, the least frequently occurring uh, symbol this is the intuition and that thing will reduce my average length as we can see here any questions Okay, any questions at this point, please feel free to ask. If not, then let us go ahead with the ninth question. This is second last question that I'm planning to take today. So here what we have been given is, uh, suppose a full prefix free binary code with code word lens this can be formed then what is the value of w okay so what we have been given here is we need to con um, these are the possible lengths we have been given that a full binary prefix free tree uh, or prefix free code binary code can be found with the given lens which means that these lengths satisfy craft inequality with strict equality okay which means what we are having here is length of a1 is 3 length of a2 is 3 length of a3 is 2 length of a4 is 2 length of a5 is w okay so by craft's inequality we have summation j equal to 1 to 5 2 to the power minus length of a j which is equal to and th which is, this is equal to 2 to the power minus 3 plus 2 to the power minus 3 plus 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus w this is equal to 1 this is strictly equal to 1 so what do we have here is this is 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 this is 1 by 4 that is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 upon 2 to the power w is equal to 1 so that what do we have here is 3 by 4 plus 1 upon 2 to the power w is 1 therefore 1 upon 2 to the power w is 1 upon 4 that is 1 minus 1 by 4 that is 1 minus 3 by 4 that is 1 by 4 which means 2 power w is 2 power 2 which means that w is 2 bits which means that if I have this set of lengths this will th using this set of lengths I can form a prefix free code and this prefix free code will be full any questions so if this question is clear on the base of this let us look at the next question so what it says is construct a binary tree and hence a code word for the previous question length so th and suppose there is an alphabet x which is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 such that probability of a1 is greater than probability of a2 is greater than probability of a3 is greater than probability of a4 is greater than probability of a5 we need to intuitively assign the generated code words to the source alphabet okay to this 
a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 we have to associate intuitively associate uh, code words to the source alphabet so that it is uh, somewhat better or it gives some minimum average length okay so what do i mean here is so that l bar is small okay fine then what we have from this previous question is this set of lengths we have 3 3 2 2 2 so basically what do we have is length of a1 is 3 length of a2 is 3 length of a3 is 2 length of a4 is 2 length of a5 is again 2 and we need to construct a binary tree for this so let's start with uh, a root node and branch it out like this one one we need three codes of two length so again this node will have to branch this is zero sorry this will have to branch out both the nodes will have to branch out like this okay and we have three codes uh, three code words of length two so this is one two and three these are the code words so with length two that is one and let's see this is one zero and one zero so the first one is one one so this first one is one one the second one is one zero the third one is zero one and next what we need is we need code words two code words of length three so what we'll do is we'll branch out this this node like this okay So this is again one zero. So we have a code word here and we have a code word here. Both are of length three. So this is zero zero one. Similarly, this one is zero zero zero. Okay. Now we have two code words of length. Three and three code words of length two. Now another information that we have here is probability of a1 is greater than probability of a2 is greater than probability of a3 is greater than probability of a4 and is greater than or equal to probability of a5. Now if we recall our this question eight here, what we saw was this code two was worse to one because we had assigned large length code word to the most frequently appearing uh, symbol since this was of highest probability and we had uh, uh, given the largest code word length uh, code word with largest length to this this was a worse this was increasing however if we look at this code one the smallest length code word was assigned to the most frequent one so intuitively what we see here is if the probability of any symbol is very high compared to others we need to assign it uh, the lowest possible uh, symbol uh, low, the code word with the lowest possible length and so on we should go in that so if the probability of uh, probability is in increasing order the association the code word length should be in decreasing order exact opposite thing so now if we observe here this a1 and a2 are of largest probability 
which means we should assign the smallest possible length code words to it. So basically this is decreasing this is decreasing order of probability okay that is a1 oh, I'm so sorry so the stupidity I have done here sorry so actually we what we have been given is we need to figure out this yeah I'm sorry for the confusion what we have been given is this is decreasing order of probability However, which means that a1 has a larger probability a2 has the second largest probability and so on which means this should be the order in which I will associate the lens that is length This A1 has largest probability. So again, I'll have to assign lengths like this. That is, A1 is having the largest probability, so it should have the smallest lengths. That is, the smallest length here is 2. So I'll have the code word, let's say 1, 1, assigned to it. Similarly, A2 has second largest probability, so I'll assign 1, 0 to it. A3 has third largest probability, so I'll have 0, 1 associated to it. A4 and A5 both have least probabilities, and uh, we have 3, 3 length code words remaining, so we can assign it something like this. Now, this is decreasing order of probability, and this will be. decreasing order of code word lengths so if my uh, probability of a1 is very high then I'll have the smallest uh, code word assigned to it Is it clear? Any questions? This is all I wanted to cover today. If you have questions in any of uh, the things that I have discussed, please feel free to ask. If you have no questions, no further questions, you are free to leave the meeting. Thank you for attending today's session. All these video uh, this session uh, will be uploaded on my YouTube channel you people will get the links on your NPTEL profile also this these notes will also be available made available to you if you have any questions you may ask me in the next tutorial or make use of the uh, question answer platform which is available on uh, with your NPTEL thing I'll be available on there uh, there also in order to answer the questions related to my session 
if you have any questions please feel free to ask any time this is all i wanted to cover today thank you so much for attending thank you madam thank you so much